God bless you all. Isn't it a blessing to be here? It's wonderful. We thank God that you're here and we ask God to look over your lives and to bless you. Wherever you're from, whatever your background is, we ask God to touch you with his love and, and let the truth of who he is fill your life. I just want to read some scriptures from uh, uh, from Exodus and a short scripture from uh, Hebrews. And what I want to point out today is uh, is the covenant that that God made with Israel, with the Jews. Now, to the best of my knowledge. God chose the Jews to be his people and he made a covenant with them. I don't know that he did that with anyone else. So the Jews and the, the uh, and Israel is really a very special, holds a very special place in God's heart. Now, God made a covenant with, with the Israelites uh, through, through Moses, you know about the Ten Commandments and you know that Moses spent 40 days on, on the Mount, Mount of Sinai and God spoke to both Moses and the people. They heard his voice and in order to put that covenant in place there needed to be a blood sacrifice and this is what what Moses did to put that into really to, to switch that on and Moses this is Exodus 24 4 8 and it says and Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and he rose early in the morning and built an, an altar at the foot of the mountain and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel then he sent young men of the, of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it into basins and half of the blood was sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of people and they said, all that the Lord said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made for you, according to all these words. So God required that offerings were made, a burnt offerings, and, and the blood from the animals. Actually the sins were put upon the animals and they were offered up and God forgave the people of Israel and he made a covenant with them. But do you know it wasn't too long after that happened that they that the people stopped observing the laws and broke the covenant and God had to do something about it. And then it goes on to say in Hebrews 8, 7, it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant made with their fathers in the days when I took them by their hands and led them out of the land of, Israel, of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now, we're talking about the new covenant. And it all, it's all about that Jesus becoming the sacrifice for us. I will make a new house of Israel. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, 
and they shall be my people. So this new covenant that God is talking about isn't just for the Israelites. It's actually for the Gentiles as well. Everyone else that, that, that wasn't God people. Now, I want to make this point really clear. The Jews and the, the Israelites are the God's people. God didn't make a covenant with anybody else. He chose them to be his people and for him to be his God. But it was through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed, he opened the door for the rest of the world, for you and me, the Gentiles, to come into the kingdom. For I will be merciful to, to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember them no more. That's what the new covenant is about. For you receiving forgiveness and in a way that God forgets about them completely. He's interested in, in you receiving his love and you becoming part of his family so he can be your God. That's the reason for the covenant. And then in 9-11 it says, but Jesus came as a high priest for the good of things to come with the greater and the more perfect tabernacle, not made of hands. That is not of this creation. So not of things of this world. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Cleanse your consciences from dead, dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the trans transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of, e of eternal inheritance. That's the reason Jesus came and died on the cross for you. He became the sacrifice. His blood was shed. So your sins could be forgiven. Your transgressions can be forgiven. And it's what more can God do for, for you? He sh he's showing his love. Jesus became the sacrifice and he's asking you to receive Jesus and come into the kingdom. There's only one way and it's through Jesus. No other way, no other religion, no other prophet, nothing. Jesus is the only way to your eternal life. He paid for your sins. He took it upon himself. Because we're all sinners and we all fall short of the grace of God. So there were two covenants made to the people in this world. The first one to the Israelites. The second one by the blood of Jesus Christ for you and for me. Now, the question is, will you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Saviour? That's a choice only you can make. But we're here every week for that very reason, to encourage you and, and hope that we can persuade you to look for the truth, make Jesus your Lord and your Saviour and receive your salvation today. There is no other way. Jesus is the truth. He's the light. He's the only way to the Father. And I'm going to share a quick, quick prayer, the Romans prayer, or the sinner's prayer. It's an invitation. Receive the new covenant by the blood of Jesus Christ today. Come to know the truth and who God really is. Make a life with God today. And I'm hoping you're saying to yourselves that maybe God is real. Maybe Jesus is real. What if he is? What are you going to do about it? I can only ask you to open your heart, come to God in repentance, and see what God does for you. Now, he did it for me, and I keep telling you, I went to him personally, and I spoke to him, and I challenged him. And immediately he showed himself to me. And he filled me with his love and his anointing. 
So my belief wasn't enough for me to receive my salvation and to receive the promise of his inheritance, that's heaven, for all eternity, to live in his love. Now, you have to make the choice. But here's the invitation for you. Say this prayer with me. I repent of my sin. Jesus died for me and that he was crucified. He rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. Receive God's love and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.